What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Warrior Wednesday, where we discuss relevant topics designed to make you a better warrior. You know, today I'm probably going to break some hearts, and uh, I'm probably going to get some angry comments from what I'm about to tell you. And uh, I'm probably going to make some people upset. <laughs> so if that interests you, if you want to hear me make some people upset, keep watching. But I'm warning you right now, you might click away in a minute or two, because what I'm going to say is completely atypical for like a YouTube self-defense guy to ever admit or ever say. <clears throat> but I'm not your typical YouTube self-defense guy. Um, <laughs> I've got... I've got some experience that's a little bit unique. Will, Will, tell me. I have to know. <laughs> What's going to make some people angry? I clicked on this title because I want to know. All right, here it is. The gun guy culture in the United States is absolutely fucking retarded. And uh, a lot of the guys out there who, and if you're one of these guys, no offense, okay, no offense, but a lot of the guys out there who espouse all this shit about got my 1911 and uh, two extra magazines, really no problem. I don't need to learn that self-defense stuff. You know, the uh, hooligans come approaching me. It's two to the chest, one to the head. You know, that that type of mentality is absolutely fucking absurd. Um, the fact that anybody out there would think like that is low IQ. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. It is. It's not low IQ. It's it, it it displays to me that you haven't had a lot of real life experience with self defense. I'm about to list out several reasons, which is which are undebatable, that are going to right away end this argument. <laughs> okay, first of all, if you kill somebody, you're 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 killing you're ki you're taking a human life. First of all, like if that doesn't bother you. You need to like really find some religion <laughs> or find some spirituality. Like you really need to like take take some time for yourself and like meditate. Because let me tell you this: like you can talk hard all you want, you can like come online and like or with your boys or whatever down at the bar. Yeah, I don't care, man. You know, I've got my Glock on my hip, and if any of these guys come at me, go, bah, bah, bah. who's calling me? Can't talk right now. That type of talk, that type of tough talk is like, it, it just, it tells me right away, number one, that you don't have much experience with violence. Um, or you're just a fucking psycho. And not in a good way. Not in like, oh, that dude's a psycho. Like, don't mess with him. Like, no, like that means that you're fucked up. Like you've had some hurt. You've like, people have hurt you and like, you need love. <laughs> don't, you can't, like, this is like, human life we're talking about here i don't care they're a bad guy you know i they if i didn't take them out they'd look we're not we're not in freaking iraq here all right we're not talking about killing terrorists for united states like we're talking about a self-defense situation yes there are absolutely some situations where you need a gun right like if the dude pulls a knife and you got no choice but to like fucking plug him in the chest like yeah i get it are you going to be like okay afterwards you might need some therapy but you know what? Um, or you might just drink a lot, right? But in any case, it's not something you ever really want to deal with. Um, so what in your right mind makes you think that going from like a self-defense situation to the extreme of murder or killing is like in any way the right move? Just give me two seconds here. Can we move our meeting back about 15 minutes? forgot I have a meeting. I'm fucking terrible, but whatever. Um, I, I know if I don't get this video done now, I'm like not going to do it. So you're welcome. So that's the first thing, right? Like the, the first thing of this is like a real warrior, real like a real warrior, a man who's experienced with violence doesn't want to do violence. Usually like the, often, right? If you, I mean, just like I just said, I mean, I don't need to say anymore. Okay. That's, that's first thing. Why the fuck would you ever go from like they're gonna fight me to like I'm gonna kill them? It's absurd. Okay, number two, the United States is the only place in the world where you can carry a gun legally, legally, unless you're like super wealthy or like pretty much. 
or we're like breaking the law, like or you're in a conflict zone. Like it, it's the only place in the world where you can do that. So if you ever have any type of aspirations to ever leave the United States and go abroad at all, even to Europe or fucking whatever, um, or the Caribbean on a fucking vacation, then like you can't carry your gun with you. Okay. Like, I'm sorry to say, I spend about five or six months out of the year abroad in like, like semi permissible or sometimes even non permissible fucking countries. Um, these photos you see behind you, like these, they're, I, I've taken them all. Like, it's these shithole places I go to. So, is it dangerous? It can be. Can you carry a gun? Fuck no. Like, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but. Even within CONUS, right, you can't go to, like, any city where you really need your gun and take your gun with you. Like, St. Louis, maybe, yeah, but, like, New York, like, L.A., like, you you, you, don't, you can't, like, a lot of those shithole Democrat-run communist, cunt, like, uh, might as well be countries, states, you can't take your gun with you. Well, then, well, I'm gonna just going to stay in the red states. I won't, I don't have to leave the United States. And I don't have to go to those Democrat cities. I can stay in the red states. All right. <laughs> okay. If that's what you want to do. Like, I'm not judging you on that. If you want to limit yourself to like 30 different states within the United States and never leave that bubble, like, sure. Right. Like, okay. I get it. Well, you know, I work two jobs and I, you know, I don't have the luxury to go travel around. And doesn't that? Uh... All right. Well, like... <laughs> You know, I get that, but like, it, do you really want to stay in like red states inside the U.S. for the rest of your fucking life? Like, I and if you do, like, that's fine, that's cool. Like, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Like, I'm not judging that, but um, a lot of people don't. Okay, a lot of people like to go to other places and have new experiences, and you can't take your fucking gun with you. All right. Especially like if you travel for work at all or whatever, like you, you you're not taking your gun. With, so let's get that those two first points out of the way. Like, don't be a fucking crazy murderous like villain, and don't be under the illusion that you can like be armed anywhere outside of like thirty states within the continental United States. Thirdly, like, <laughs> do you really want? legal expenses up the fucking ass like you if you think that you're going to shoot somebody even within the united states and not face any legal repercussions you're insane like there may be cases when you're like deep in the fucking south or like deep in like the back where like maybe they don't charge you and you get away with it and then you're just you have to live with taking a human life but like that's it right Okay, like, cool. But what about, like, the other, like, 70 or 80% of, like, realistic violence where maybe it's not 100% clear cut and maybe some DA somewhere, like, just doesn't like guns or doesn't like people with guns or just wants to make a name for themselves. And they're going to bring it, try to bring a case on you. They're at least going to try to charge you. And, and if they charge you and they try you, you have to pay for those legal expenses. So, well, I have... The best CCW legal insurance their money can buy, you know. All right, cool. Like I'm I hope you do, number one. But even if you do, um your CCW insurance company doesn't have to decide that they want to cover your case. So, you know, you could be facing very serious legal charges. And I'm talking a life sentence in prison where you go to like a fucking level four yard and like you got way bigger problems than that, right? And if you tell me you're not afraid of that, well, you've never talk to anybody who's been to like some kind of fucked up prison right so like there's a lot of reasons <laughs> why like this whole notion of like carrying a gun for self-defense is the magic bullet so to speak pardon the pun well will you know i'm 65 years old and uh you know i'm not in the greatest health so a gun's my only my only uh way to defend myself no no it's not i'm sorry your words you have words you can talk you can talk your way out of situations maybe you can't run but like 
you can still use simple self-defense techniques if you are attacked, even by a, like a younger or stronger opponent. Like, and I'm not saying that that's necessarily the best option, like, but it's also, it's an option before you go to your weapon, right? Like, if you just pull out your gat and blast somebody, that's not cool, man. I mean, yes, I get it. Like, in this wild scenario that we're making up, a young kid attacking a 65-year-old man is like, <laughs> he deserves to get blasted for that. But like, my point is, it's just not always appropriate to go right for your gun. And even in the eyes of the court of the law, like if you throw a chin jab or a fucking eye gouge or someone at somebody first, and they continue to press on you, and you have to take out your weapon and do what you have to do, then okay, like he tried everything he fucking could, and he had to do it. Um, no jury is going to convict you on that, right? The jury might decide that, like, oh, like an old white man shoots a young black teenager. Like, dude, like, come on, we're being realistic here. Like, that doesn't look good. All right. So, like, use your heads about this thing, right? Like, use your head about it. And don't get me wrong. Like, I am all for the Second Amendment. I think anybody who wants to carry a gun legally should be able to. And I also think that we should have some type of like, um, road to where like even felons after 10 years or something like that with like no trouble no nothing else on their record should be able to apply and like have their rights restored like I, i'm all for like a hardcore sec i'm a hardcore second amendment dude and i wish more countries had something like a second amendment but they don't so we're having this discussion and i'm gonna tell you straight up like in these fucking shithole countries that I go to sometimes, the last thing you ever want to do is get in any trouble with the law, right? The authorities will fucking, like, fuck you up because you're a foreigner. And, like, if they take all of your money and nothing else, you're lucky. You're lucky. I was in one city recently, and I'll leave the name of the city out. But it would just struck me, right? I was like driving in a taxi and we passed like the main prison there and there were guards with m60 machine guns and i think they were m like old school m60s pointed out of their turrets like not inside the prison yard but like out at everyone and they were like tracking people like it was fucking crazy and like i know that might not sound like too crazy like oh yeah of course like a third world country but like i don't know man like just the fact that like like, if you fucking, like, made a move on that shit, you'd get blasted with 7.62s up your ass like that. I don't know, man. Like, there's just something about that. Like, the, the military being, like, ready and willing to kill their own population. Like, that... You can't fuck around in other places. Um, Not like you can in the States. So the last thing you ever want to do is fucking like injure or kill somebody in like a different country. But okay, all right, I get it. Like nobody goes, like very few people do what I do and like go to these countries. Fine, cool. Even within the United States, dude, like if you if you have been studying martial arts for any significant period of time, and then you pull out your gun and shoot somebody, dude, you're in trouble, man. They will look you up. They will, like, get to the bottom of it. Like, oh, the dude's got, like, a freaking purple belt in jiu-jitsu or, like, a box for 10 years or whatever, dude. Like, and he, like, he just, like, shot this dude when he could have, like, defended himself. And they're probably, they're probably right in some cases. They'll send you to prison for that. They don't give a fuck, dude. Like, the DAs don't give a fuck. Trust me, I know. You got to be fucking careful about this shit. Not to mention the fact that a lot of the times, dude, like in a real life situation, you can talk your way out of most shit. Like, de-escalate it, dude. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Can we? I'm cool. Like, I'm sorry. We're not cool. We're not cool. Blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. And then you run away. Or like, you fucking like, I'm sorry. Like, and, and usually they'll let you go. Like, it's, <laughs> it's. You know, and the fucking the times where you have to fight, you got to fight. But like, I can't tell you that rarely is it like a good option to use your weapon. That's such a discretionary thing. That's like such a case by case thing. But I'm just saying, that like, I've just talked to so many fucking people who were like, 
think the answer is to shoot somebody every time. And it's it, it just displays to me like a, a distinct lack of understanding of fucking reality. Not to mention the fact that like there's a lot of situations where you might dig for your firearm and not be able to get it out. It, it happens. Maybe you keep your firearm in a glove box. Maybe you keep it in a backpack. Maybe you keep it somewhere off body. Maybe you have it somewhere on body. Maybe you carry appendix and like fuck whatever, right? Maybe somebody sees it and pins it to you. And now it's like, what do I do? Like, I didn't really train. I only trained how to pull it out and shoot people with it. Like, you need to learn unarmed combatives and you need to practice it. Now, I'm not saying to be like me and like go and just like love fighting and you need to like go and become crazy with like wrestling and everything. No, but like literally there's no excuse not to learn basic unarmed combatives. You're never too old. Look, Fairburn was in his late sixties, I believe early, well, mid fifties to late sixties when he was training 18 year old com uh, commandos to go kill Germans. We know this stuff works like kind of no matter what your age range, like unless you're like 80 and in a walker like that case, get fine, carry a gun. But like, come on, like most of you out there watching this have no fucking excuse, right? If you're watching Warrior Wednesday with any type of regularity, especially like, dude, you're a warrior. Act like it. OK, a warrior has a broad spectrum of skills and like. Only one of those skills should be like, what am I trying to say? A warrior has a broad spectrum of skills. One of the tools in your toolbox is shooting. If you're lucky enough to like grow up in the United States and like not have a serious enough record to bar you from owning a firearm, which happens, like you're very lucky. Okay. Like, yes, you have the right to like keep and bear arms, but you're not always going to have the luxury of being armed. And I just, I want, I want more Americans specifically to realize this. And I want you to also realize that like, when you do go overseas, like because people are not able to carry firearms, they're better with their hands. You go to Britain and like, you start some shit, you guys box like a motherfucker out there. Like guys will fucking headbutt the shit out of you. Like, and they do it, you know, like that's their culture. They're, they, they fight. Well, Will, I'm never going to put like whatever, dude. Like, you get my point. You get into a situation where like somebody starts pulling you out of your car, but your fucking gats in your glove box. Like, what are you gonna do then, dude? Like, come on. Even if you were in your like you are in your like red state where you like never leave your little Republican bubble, like there's a chance you can get caught without your firearm. It, it happens. What now? Well, before that, you should have visited gutterfightingseekers.com. We will train you how to use these simple combative techniques, and it doesn't require a lot of size or strength. It's very simple. Again, Fairburn like designed this stuff like so anybody could use it. Operatives going overseas who may be like career businessmen or like fat or a woman, right? Anybody can do this stuff doesn't take like extreme size and strength to chin jab, to chop them in the throat, to gouge their eyes out, to knee them in the groin. Like we'll teach you how to do this stuff. Go to fightingsecrets.com. And it's fucking cheap. The price I charge for the training is ridiculously cheap because I want people to know it. And it's all like online. You boom, you fucking put your credit card information in. You pay like 30 bucks. Boom, we send you the video in the email like instantly. It's you instant download and you have it for forever. But even if you look, if you don't want to train with me, that's fine. You should be training. <laughs> you should be training. And especially if you are within fighting age range, like if you are like fucking like 16 to like 50 something, like you should be training. You have no excuse. So that's my two cents on it. All right. Um, I've just noticed that, you know, I've noticed for, from like talking to Americans that don't go abroad or like don't even really go outside of their bubbles. Like 
lot of you guys can be very fucking ignorant. <laughs> the rest of the world does not operate like this. I just, I want you to know that I don't hate on you guys who are gun dudes. Like I, I, I appreciate you and I support the second, like second amendment greatly, but I want warriors to become more capable. And like I said, shooting is a tool in your toolbox. So is unarmed combatives. So is verbal judo. So is running. <laughs> right. And again, driving first aid, blah, 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 blah. These are something, these are things we all need to be as warriors good at them all or proficient at them all don't let one slack we concentrate on another like well i'm going to concentrate mostly on shooting no you should be concentrating on shooting you should be concentrating on being a good driver you should be concentrating on first aid and blah 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 right and unarmed combative should be a part of that but you constantly train once a week fine fine once a week's totally fine like do it once a week once every two weeks whatever like, as long as it's, like, at least a couple times a month, get out there and train, dude. All right? With that being said, please remember that you are your first and the last line of defense. Go to fighting 2 is the website. Show your support. Pick up a t-shirt, whatever. And in any case, please be safe out there, guys. I have the feeling that it's going to get fucking dangerous. Especially in the United States over the next coming like six months. It's politically all this shit happening. So like take what I say to heart. Go train. I'll see you on Saturday for another combat video. Cheers.